What's up guys? So it's Addicted to Nature here and today we're going to be talking about breeding zebrafish. Uh, and this is actually part two of my video series on glowfish and zebrafish. And the, the part one is, the link is in the description below. I talk in part one, I talk about my own motivation for keeping fish, uh, zebrafish, my experiences, sort of their tank mates, and even a little bit about glowfish and the scientific community behind. Oh, look, look, my fish are going crazy in that Amazon sword. Wow, look at that. They're going crazy though. Those, I think those are my uh, uh, tetras, but yeah, they are. It's hard to see in this uh, in, the, in the actual video. But anyways, I digress. If you want to look at part one, if you want to check that out, the link is in the description below. Uh, I strongly recommend if you don't have zebra fish to go ahead and like check it out before you go get them. All right, so, but this video is I'm going to dedicate to breeding zebra fish. So let me start with the parameters and then I'm actually going to show you my setup. So let's talk about sort of temperature. First, you want to keep these zebra fish breeding at about 26 to 28 degrees Celsius. And so for my American viewers, that's about 76 to 78 to 7, uh, 82 degrees, sorry, 78 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a little bit warmer than a normal tropical uh, aquarium. But if you don't, if you don't have um, a sort of a mini heater, that's totally fine. You can just sort of uh, keep it at the right beside your, your aquarium. Um, mine bred that way. I didn't add, use an extra heater. These is, this is, it's not that hard to breed these fish uh, compared to other fish like, like maybe betas. Um, and a lot of angel fish. But temperature, like I said, I gave you a range of around, as long as it's above 76 degrees Fahrenheit to maybe like 82, you should be fine. Uh, breed these in the spring and summer. Don't do it in the winter. I highly uh, discourage breeding any sort of fish in the winter unless you are fully decked out with heaters and light and lamps and everything else because it's just really a pain when when your heater stops working or, or if you just don't have a heater and your whole batch of fish die don't do that so and another reason why i want this during the spring is that the spring has a really nice light day day night cycle naturally so if you were to just open up some windows and let the natural light flow in during the spring. The zebra fish are actually really sensitive to light when they're breeding. So uh, they, they need a really long dark period, so at night, and then these fish like to spawn at dawn. So as soon as it gets light outside, these guys start spawning for a couple hours. And, and, and that's usually the only time they spawn. So in the lab, we sort of do this artificially with timers and lights, but here you can just, if you're out in my, like for me, in my, I'm in my fish room right now, there's a lot of windows and I can just sort of use that as my light day cycle or light dark cycle. Um, it's about 12 hour and 12 hour if you guys don't have that good, if you guys really wanna do this during the winter, if you're in, indoors in an apartment, do 12 hours of light, 12 hours of dark, and do not, for, for whatever reason, do not go in the middle of the night to check up on your angelfish they, or on your, on your zebrafish. They will think that it's dawn and they will start breeding and then you turn off the lights after like five minutes and then they, it just throws them off, right? So do not do that. Do not shine a light on them in the middle of the night. Um, so we talk about, let's talk about food. Okay, so food, I like to condition my fish before I breed them. So about two weeks before I start breeding them, I would feed them fruit flies. And I keep dart frogs, so I have access to fruit flies uh, uh, constantly. If you don't, it's fine, you can go get blood worms, or if you just don't wanna do that, you know, I've honestly, you can go and you just feed them normally, a little bit more than normal, if you will. Uh, um, with, if you use a tropical fish flake or a tropical fish pellet, just feed them a little bit more. Um, it works, it's, they're not picky. These fish are really easy to breed. That's why you see them for $1 or $2 at the fish store. They're not that expensive. Um, let's see. So before I got, get into setup, I wanna talk a little bit about uh, just breeding in general. 
if you know, for example, if you know that you're gonna be going somewhere for in two weeks, don't don't breed these fish. Come wait for when you come back because uh, the the month after these fish are actually breed is the hardest time for you to be going anywhere on vacation or, 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 or you want to be home most of the time or, or at least go to work and come home or go to school and come home because you need to always be there in case something happens. I've had, I've lost entire spawns because I forgot to feed them one day and or, or if my brine shrimp ran out then, then you need to be there in order to immediately realize that hey something's wrong i need to start a different culture or or, or 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 you just need to be there it's like taking care of a newborn infant um all right so so responsible breeding that's it that's all i want to say you, you you should know what to do by now all right so let me let me let me take the uh, let me turn this camera around and let's talk about the materials that you would need for breeding these fish Okay, so I've gone ahead and laid out everything that we need in this picture. In, in the description, in the in the description below, I've also included the list here. But here I'm talking about. It's really really easy. See, this is just one of those pet carriers that we have. It's plastic, made of plastic, and it's about the size of my palm. As you can see, it's about the length of my palm. And we're gonna need the cap, so we're gonna put this somewhere else uh, for ease of filming. I'm going to remove it for now. Second thing that we're gonna have is this plastic mesh. This mesh is what we call a crochet sort of frame. This is plastic, it's bendable. You can see this is bendable, I can bend it around. And that's what we need. We need it to be bendable and we need it to be a mesh. This mesh is about two to three centimeters uh, uh, holes here. And that's all we need to do. It's about $2 at any of your local hobby stores, like a, I had a Hobby Lobby, and a lot of those AC Moore stores will have crocheting frames. Second thing though, the well, third thing that we need are these suction cups. So what we need is we need this actually, this little sort of nub, or this knob here at the, top, at the back. And what we're gonna do is we only need two of these. and get these at Target. Um, they usually come with a metal hook to hang things on the glass with. Um, so just go and look for them. They should be next to one of those like removable hooks. All right, so what you're gonna do is we're, in, we're going to uh, lay this on the side, and I'm gonna put the methylene blue away from here for now. I'm gonna take this uh, a circular sort of suction cup, and we're just gonna push it down on that side. All right, that's not going anywhere. It's pretty, pretty, pretty sturdy and stable in there. I'm gonna lay it on the other side. I'm gonna put it in right there. So once I flip this out, you can see that they're at the very bottom, correct? So lastly, methylene blue is for the water and uh, after the, the fish has spawned, and this is sort of the antifungal medication of choice for me because it's non-toxic to these uh, embryos as long as you don't use too much. So one or two drops is definitely going to be enough. And, and I should mention that the concentration for this one is, is 1% aqueous solution aqueous solution, so it's 1% methylene blue. So what you're gonna do is we're gonna cut this mesh to fit the inside of this tank, all right? And, and it's always good to cut a little bit bigger and then adjust down from the sides as you can. So what I've done is actually, I've cut out a perfect size here. You can see that because the edges are round here, on the ends or the corners are round. I've also decided to round my corners, round each of these corners. So we want this to be a perfect fit, all right? And so I can push this all the way inside like that. It's got a perfect fit. We don't want any holes on the sides or the edges here. We're gonna push down, we're gonna push down, we're gonna push down, and we're gonna get to the point where it hits that little, those suction cups and it doesn't go anywhere else. So this is actually perfect, this is perfect. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna try to get a little slant going on. So I'm gonna push this down a little bit more. Remember, not too much. And I'm going to sort of raise this up just a little bit. This is actually good. I don't wanna do any more because the more I do it, the less, uh, the less likely that it'll actually work out. Like, like now. 
we are going to, it takes a little while to sort of get these together in the right uh, uh, direction, in the right way, but once you get to it, you can leave it alone for the rest of the time there. All right, so that's good. You can see there's a little bit of an arc here, but that shouldn't matter for us. What the fish is going to do is, you see this slant here? We only want the water level up to maybe here. All right, so on the right side here, you see how it's a little bit higher than the left? The right side should only have about a centimeter of water, maybe even less. What this does is it's going to imitate a natural river bank where this fish likes to spawn. And so what kind of water do I add? You literally just go into your aquarium. Oh, there's a little fish. Oh, there's an angel fish. Or there's a zebra fish. And I'm going to just put the water down. Okay, and, um, and I think there's a zebra fish in here. Yep, he's right there. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to add water. I'm going to get it on this side so he doesn't get too spooked. And normally you want to do this uh, sort of in the afternoon. Uh, you don't want to do this at night. You don't want to do this in the morning. You want to do this in the afternoon. You can feed them a little bit before you do this. But see, see how there's only a little bit of water on this side? That's totally enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this video and I'm going to uh, end up catching the rest of the zebra fish. And I'm going to keep them in here for overnight. And when you talk about you want males and females, how do you tell the difference? The males, so like this guy here, he's a male. And you can tell because he's really, really thin. Like the males are really, really thin. Uh, it's hard to tell because he's moving around really fast. But maybe this will help. Let me take this. He's really thin. Well, you can see that. The females are really, really fat, okay? And that's, that's because they have all their eggs in there. And so if you're breeding and you're not sure and you just have a school, it's good to just keep five or six of these fish in here, right? It doesn't really matter because if you have five or six of this, these fish, chances are you're going to have one or two of each. All right, so I'm gonna end up, I'm gonna finish uh, putting all the other zebra fish in here and then I'm gonna get back to you guys because it takes a while to catch them. All right guys, so I've gone ahead and fished out all the zebra fish, uh, no pun intended. And as you can see, I have five in here. So like I said, if you're not sure how to tell male from female, all you gotta do is grab a bunch and put them in there, right? Um, they'll be fine in this container for the rest of the night. And right now it's in the afternoon, but you wanna do this in the afternoon, you wanna do this in the morning or in the middle of the night, you wanna do this at the afternoon. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep these here, and don't disturb them, and you're just going to let them sit for the night. And then in the morning, when they are ready to spawn, they will spawn for a couple hours and you can, by noon, oh, sorry. By noon, you can remove the parents from the top. All right, just take your net and just net them out and you should have eggs at the bottom collecting at the bottom here. And they should have fell through the sort of the uh, um, plastic mesh. All right, so how do you tell the male from the female? As you can see, I have a leopard a uh, 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 skinned one here. That's a male. You can see that he's really, really thin, right? And and I don't know. I don't think these guys are in focus. So let me try to grab this and focus them manually. All right. So leopard guy is here. That's a guy. He's really, really thin. That's another guy, big guy up here that I was pointing to earlier. He's the first one that I caught. And if you see this, 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 this really fat one here. Right, following my my nails that is a female you can see that it's a lot of it's a very different shape it's very very plump she's very very big all right she's filled with eggs here and so now that i know i have two different genders in here i can just leave them alone for the rest of the night so uh thank you guys very much for watching this video get ready for part three where I look at the embryos under the microscope but for now that's all I'm going to do and if you liked this video if it's informative 
then uh, please, you know, comment, like, subscribe, and uh, I look forward to making this third video for you guys.